Hey, hey, Taurus, Intuitive Soul Coach here with your January 2023 bonus reading. Welcome back to my channel if you are returning and welcome if you are new. Today we'll dive into the collective energy of Taurus, so please do take what resonates and leave the rest behind. If you are interested in a personal reading or even entering into the free monthly reading giveaway, you can find both of those links in the description box below. All right. So Taurus, we'll be diving into the cosmos, taking a look at the moon energy, how your new year is starting off, and just overall general messages coming in. Now we do have that Cancerian full moon on the 6th of uh, January, and it looks like the Cancerian moon was very important for you. Now we do have Libra energy, Cancer, and Leo. Now Taurus, you may have these additional placements in your chart. You may be dealing with others who have these placements in their chart, or you are just embodying the planetary energies that are taking place. Now you have the full moon in Cancer. So this is the first full moon of January, again on the 6th. And this is about letting your feelings uh, dissolve. If anything was left over from 2023, or excuse me, 2022, this was the time, or you still can, work on releasing those watery emotions. If some of you have been through a lot of struggles in 2022, I feel like the year may be starting off a little bit slower, especially as we navigate through the retrogrades, as we work on release to embrace the new year ahead. Now, the 6th of January may have been a very powerful time. Some of you may even have had issues with communication. I'm getting here. Some of you may have been in arguments that may have left you feeling a little bit disheartening. For others of you, it really affected your energy. It's important for you to honor those feelings, Taurus, but it's also important for you to let them dissolve after you feel them and heal them, then release them so they don't dictate or control your success. Okay, so if there's anything that you're hanging on to from yesterday or from 2022 or harboring some feelings, do what you can to release, whether that's making amends, it could be an apology, it could be closure, or even journaling. I'm getting journaling is very effective. Now I keep hearing for you, Taurus, communication. I'm getting something with the throat chakra here as well. Now some of you may physically have something going on with the throat region, uh, but I do feel intuitively this is about communicating, speaking your world into being, and also getting something off your chest may be very important for you. Now we are moving into a more enriching time around the 21st, which is that new moon in Aquarius. So that is, uh, Aquarius is an air sign. So it's about getting more logical. Instead of letting the watery emotions at times get the best of us, we're, we're moving forward with more logic. And you have here Leo, or excuse me, Libra and energy. And this is also air. This is a fellow air sign along with Aquarius. You will be able to find more balance toward mid to end of January with whatever it is that may, may have been a struggle for you, especially when it does come to emotions, letting go, releasing. There's more balance coming in here for you, Taurus. And this could also be balancing out your diet, your health routine. I'm getting something here with getting back on track or setting up a new schedule or routine that's healthier. So for example, uh, you may be going dry January, trying to eat healthier, a new exercise regime. You may start journaling more. There could be a meditative practice. Maybe you've set yourself up to read more books in 2023. So you're setting yourself up for success, but it may have just taken a little bit of a slow start for you. When we're in retrograde, we tend to really work through all of the REs, reflecting, reevaluating, reorganizing. Some of you, some of you got down and dirty, I just heard here. Not that kind of down and dirty, maybe, but I'm getting down and dirty with housework, possibly. Uh, you may have really been grounding your energy, reorganizing, going through maybe file cabinets, closets. Uh, junk drawers, garage spaces, things of that nature here, Taurus. And I feel like that actually helps you 
clear your, your mind and it helps you feel organized inside and out. So if you have been feeling that nesting energy or feeling like you want to organize, then absolutely, by all means, take a Saturday and do that uh, or tackle it over the course of you know a few hours each night, whatever it may be for you to find more balance in your life. There's also some sort of invitation I see coming in for you. And Aries also received this energy, uh, Taurus, but this could be either a wedding invitation. Uh, it could be a job invitation. Perhaps you've been putting your resume out there, but I'm getting here that there's some sort of message or news coming your way, Taurus, that's going to really help you out. Uh, when not so much help you out, but it'll make you feel like you can get out of your shell a little bit more. Uh, and it, it may be about communicating as well, because I'm getting that strongly. Something within the heart chakra and throat chakra here. Now, we also have this Leo energy. Leo, I'm getting that some of you Taurians out there may have strong Leo rising or Leo moon, or it could also be a north node. But this is about being humble. This is about being humble, standing within your integrity, being compassionate and being kind, even when other people may be uh, nasty towards you or maybe when the energy is quite thick around you. This is about you staying humble and staying within your own lane. There's a really good book on codependency. I believe uh, Codependent No More by Melody Beattie, I believe. Don't quote me. Uh, but if some of you struggle at times with codependency or if you struggle with letting other people's uh, actions really affect your emotions, you may want to take a look at that because that just popped up. So uh, for some of you, it may be very beneficial, very helpful. But I feel that you are really uh, putting putting a lot of good vibes into your energy and you're setting yourself up for a uh, positive movement moving forward, especially towards the end of January. Now let's dive into your tarot and see what's showing up for you. What do we have here for Taurus? We're just doing some general messages. Okay, a lot of air energy coming in, which doesn't surprise me with that new moon in Aquarius. A lot of you are ready to move forward, but you just feel maybe a little bit stuck. Oh, wow, beautiful, okay. So you go from, uh, of course, the watery Pisces element to the air here and vice versa. So some of you are going back and forth, emotions uh, and heart center and then logic and head. So there could be some decisions that you're weighing up on. What else do we have here? Thank you, Spirit. All right, let's take a look. Oh my goodness, wow. If you have Aries in your chart, or if you are on that Aries cusp, you may wanna check out Aries reading as well. A lot of similar uh, energy showing up. Now we have the King of Michael and the Eight of Michael showing up right away. This is swords, okay? King of swords, Eight of swords. You're staying as principled, rational, and ambitious as you can. I feel like a lot of you Taurians are highly respected for what it is that you do, or just uh, because you do stay in your own integrity. Your wisdom and objectivity are important right now. It's, it says here, stay in your integrity, which we just talked about with being humble. A situation that calls for honest and open communication, which we just talked about that as well. So I love that these are synchronizing and flowing together. So if things do not seem synchronized, in the first couple of weeks of January, depending on when you're watching this, things will start to clear up. Because again, I'm getting strong communication energy here for you, Taurus, but I'm also getting a uh, rigorous honesty is important. Now, whether this has to do with you and another person, or this has to do with what you need to do for yourself. Uh, perhaps you've said, well, I really want to get in shape this year. And then maybe uh, the, the 10th of January rolls around and you start to uh, eat unhealthy. Getting honest, rigorously honest about what it is that you need to do to stay on track. Because the King of Swords, he sets up a routine. He knows what he needs to do and he sticks to it. So for some of you, uh, I feel like you're... You're not letting emotions get in the way and overrule your, your path forward. 
and I, especially towards that new moon in Aquarius. So it's, it's okay to reflect and pause and create and try to find balance here at the beginning of the year. But then uh, as we flow into the January, February cusp, uh, it's very important for you to set that groundwork for yourself, set the groundwork for 2023, because there's a lot of success coming in. I can't wait to share the ending here with you. Now, Eight of Swords, <clears throat> excuse me, it says you can be free, make a courageous choice to change your situation, especially when you have a difficult time seeing things clearly. Now, remember that you are a soul having a human experience, um, excuse me, Taurus. So if things are a little bit jumbled here for you, I feel like this is a brand new opportunity for you to gain clarity on what it is that you have a difficult time uh, either sticking to. Also, I'm getting accountability. And this showed up for another reading as well with the, the yearly readings, I believe it was. But accountability is important. So if you're not able to see things clearly, ask for advice or professional guidance, whether it's through an intuitive, whether it's getting a gym partner, uh, perhaps you ask your spouse to... Uh, to hold you accountable for some sort of resolution that you want here. I'm also sensing that uh, we tend to be our own self-sabotager at times. The only thing that gets in the way of our success most of the time is our own selves, our own mental mind and conflicts and blocks. So I'm feeling here that this is about you releasing what no longer serves you to move forward in a more healthy dynamic. Health is coming up here, but also again, healthy communication with others. And I feel uh, staying humble, staying within your, your own integrity and within your own uh, compassion will get you far, Taurus. Now you have the Nine of Cups here partnered with the Knight of Cups. So Raphael energy is cups in this deck. And this is your wish fulfillment, dreams coming true. This is about decisions uh, from the heart, but also about you chasing your bliss. So I know it sounds counterintuitive because the King of Swords over here, he leads with logic, and the Knight of Cups leads with their heart, but what's happening is you are actually finding this balance between the head and the heart. There's that Libra and energy there. Finding the balance. That's when you're able to see clearly. That's when the miracles happen. And here's the miracle, the Nine of Cups, the wish fulfillment, whatever that may be for you. It says, make a wish. Dreams become reality, a joyful time of life, especially when you stay consistent. One of the things I always say is actions speak louder than words, but consistency speaks louder than action. We can do something one time. We can say we're going to do it and we do it. But if we stay consistent in it, that's when things really start to shift. And I was reading a really good book the other month, Atomic Habits, and it really highlights how setting yourself up for healthy habits and routines is the key dynamic when it comes to success, success in health, success in career, in business, in love. When we have those healthy habits that we continuously and repetitively do, that's how we can manifest our wishes. Because sometimes we tend to, to float on autopilot, right? We tend to go through life and just uh, flick that switch. We automatically do it. We know that when we get up in the morning, we shut our alarm off and we brush our teeth and uh, we get dressed or shower so some things are on autopilot but I feel that this year for you you're setting healthier routines added on it's almost a piggyback energy where you're gonna piggyback uh, on the habits that you've already created and that may actually help you stay consistent with new goals okay Knight of Raphael here this is someone who's romantic, someone who's dramatic at the same time as well. Uh, not dramatic in a sense that can be overzealous at times, maybe, but I feel like this is more of maybe the artist energy, the drama as in uh, acting and actor. It's that Leo energy, which you see here as well. So sometimes uh, we tend to kind of... Um, we, we tend to be that, gain that introspective on 
uh, how to stay humble here, but it also says committed romantic relationships, being swept off your feet or situations or topics that make your heart flutter. So for some of you, this could be a new relationship if you're looking for love. For others of you, it's something on the emotional sense that makes you happy. Maybe it's a new job offer that you've really, really wanted. And the emotions that you're feeling are joy, happiness, and uh, abundance. But it's okay to feel those negative emotions as well. Sometimes we think that we immediately need to eradicate the, the bad or so-called negative emotions. We wouldn't know the good without the bad, right? That's part of duality here on earth. But the key is, is remaining uh, neutral, having neutrality, <clears throat> in the face of duality, if that makes sense. Uh, your dreams are manifesting here and something that is really close to your heart or something that makes your heart flutter, like it says here, is manifesting for you. As soon as you let these fears dissolve, okay? As soon as those fears dissolve here, it may not happen right away in the month again of January, but you're setting the groundwork for your 2023. And if you haven't already checked out the yearly readings that I've uh, recently put out, you may want to go back and check that out. It gives you insight for each month in 2023. Now your final cards here, you have the Knight of Ariel. This is that slow and steady wins the race uh, type of energy here. This is the Knight of Pentacles. This knight is the most trustworthy, the most understanding, the most devoted, and the most funny knight that there is in tarot. And it says, there is so much to accomplish. Make a very detailed plan. So again, as you navigate into 2023, it may start off a little bit slower, but picks up momentum. And again, this follows and mirrors a little bit of that Aries energy. So some of you definitely are dealing with an Aries or have those placements or are on the cusp. Or maybe it's just uh, the energy here of someone coming in that could be an Aries as well. You may also be being watched over by someone kind. This could be someone in spirit, a grandmother energy, a grandfather. I'm getting grand type of energy. So even if you lost a grandfather or mother when you were a young child, please know that you are being watched over. Also, someone may have a jewelry box. There may be a jewelry box or some sort of um, wind up. I'm getting like you wind it up and music plays. I know that's very specific, but I'm, I'm feeling a jewelry box energy. So if you have a jewelry box tied to someone, they don't have to be crossed over. They could still be living as well. But there's something with the jewelry box that is showing up quite strong. So please take that as it resonates. And then your final card is the sun. This is happiness. This is abundance. This is the most positive, wonderful card in tarot. And uh, this is also card 19. And as we shift into that new moon on the 21st, we're also free of the retrogrades. I believe in maybe Saturn, Neptune, Uranus. I don't know. I don't necessarily keep up, but I certainly know when there's a retrograde because Sometimes things go wonky. I have to double check flights, double check um, documents, things of that nature, but I certainly don't let retrogrades dictate my life, but it's a wonderful time to reevaluate and just double check things. But as you navigate through these retrogrades into the new moon and into the February season and also um, Aquarius season as well, things are looking up for you. Things are looking up. You have a really, really beautiful ending here or something that you are working towards. It may be slow, it may be steady, but it is going to be the best, okay? Because it's everything that is worthy takes time, right? Relationships, it takes time and energy and effort. Even a good puzzle to build it, it takes consistency, it takes time. Whether it's a business, it takes time. There's no instant gratification or instant quick fix or instant success. I mean, sometimes you win the lottery, but even at that, if you were to win the lottery, you'd still have to figure out slowly and steadily how to manage your money, okay? You'd have to manage your energy around that abundance. So I do sense that whatever it is that you're building is going to take time, but it is going to bring in a hell of a lot of abundance for you, Taurus. And this is happiness, happiness at its best as well. Okay, very powerful. 
let's take a look and get a few messages from your spiritual team. Let's see what's coming in. For those of you that are interested in any of the decks used during your reading or any that you see above here, you can find all of that information in the description box below, including my Intuitive Soul Coach Oracle deck that I use during your monthly, uh, or excuse me, yearly readings. All right, let's get to your messages. We have right away here, answer the call, Taurus. Ha, ring, ring, spirit is calling. It's time for you to answer. Some of us tend to miss the call, right? Because we're busy. Uh, we're busy with our human life. We're busy with our careers, with our children, with our partnerships. We're busy working on self-development and healing. And even when that ring comes in, we tend to be busy that we don't always pick up, right? It's time for you to pick up. What is your soul calling you to do, Taurus? What is what is divinely inspiring you at this time? What emotion are you being pulled uh, towards? What feel, uh, what waves are you feeling at this time that you are really being attracted to? Go in this direction, okay? Because the call is showing up. I'm getting the judgment energy here where this is about changing your life for the better, because you can no longer ignore the call. Here it is coming in for you. So it's time to make a shift, find that balance, let your fears dissolve and be humble along the way. I'm getting some of you maybe stars or uh, again, actors, you did get that drama card, social media influencers, YouTubers, uh, you may be coaches, mentors, guides. You, it doesn't mean that you have to be in those lines of that line of work here, but I feel that whatever it is that you're being called to do at this time, your intuition is leading the way, your higher self is listening and guiding you, and your spiritual team is backing you up. So you can no longer uh, stay in that energy of resistance or doing something that doesn't feel aligned with yourself because you're going to feel that strong pull towards a new direction. And if you, you don't make it happen because you stay in your comfort zone, that's when a tower moment or even a wheel of fortune comes in for you. You have major transformation showing up here, Taurus. And it says things are changing at a cellular level, deep healing. You have been healing. You will continue to work on yourself. Now, even when you get the call, it doesn't mean that you have to put everything on pause. It means that you'll be able to find balance. You'll be able to still do what you're doing, but do it even more effectively because you're making time to put your priorities on the front line here. You're changing, you're shifting. There's more independence coming in here for you. You can see that beautiful uh, little sphinx there. Uh, and that represents that goddess energy or God. It doesn't matter if you're female or male, but this is about a sense of independence, a, self, a sense of worth and determination. Stay humble along the way because some of you may really become uh, famous is what I was trying to get at earlier, or you may be well known, or you may have large sums of money coming your way. I feel that you will stay humble, Taurus, uh, but this is saying here that some changes may happen really, really big that affect your energy. And I feel like uh, sometimes people have been known to let things kind of go to their head, if you know what I mean. I don't feel like you'll do that, um, but I'll also I feel like integrity is very deep, very important, and something with honoring your morals and being able to help other people out. You're very compassionate, Taurus, deep down, and I feel like there could be something even with volunteering or helping other people out, giving or extending your time, your energy, your effort, but you will be compensated. So it feels like you may be giving words of advice, but you get something back tenfold, okay? So what you're putting out there is coming back in a big way. Break the chain, break the chain. Ancestral patterns, healing, rewriting the future, wow. So some of you, this is definitely breaking some ancestral patterns. Uh, I mean, it could be as, I don't want to say as simple because it may not be simple for you to do this. But for example, let's say you've had a whole generation, excuse me, of, uh, of healers who chose to not put in the work. Or maybe you have came from a background of every single family member has smoked cigarettes or drank or uh, there's been wounding due to some sort of family dynamic, whatever it may be for you, okay? It doesn't have to be simple. It doesn't have to be 
what I had mentioned, but I do feel that you're breaking some sort of pattern. Maybe you're the first one to graduate high school, graduate college. Maybe you're the first one to start a business, to not have kids or to have kids. Maybe you're the first one to come out of the closet. Whatever it may be for you, you're breaking a pattern and it's, and it's actually going to benefit the generation that comes after you, okay? Because they say, wow, my uh, great aunt Lisa, she did this and that inspired me to go in this direction, right? This is your vibration, your energy that you are leaving a legacy behind, Taurus. Very powerful. We have your final card, awakening, awakening. Energetic upgrades, a new way of being, integration, yeah? Yeah. This is it. I mean, I don't even need to explain the awakening. You know what that is within you. You're being called to, to something big that you can feel. You can feel this change in your soul, Taurus. You hear the call. It's ringing. It's ringing and you hear it. You may not have been able to pick up the call earlier on in your life because things tend to tend to focus our energy more sometimes uh, and we're, we have to do what we need to do here on earth to pay the bills, to take care of family, to take care of our health, to heal, whatever that may be. But there's an awakening happening within you in a new way of being, a new way of being. So something is shifting on a cellular level. You're breaking the chains, breaking the patterns. This is big. I hope this resonates with you, beautiful Taurians. If so, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button. It certainly does help get the divine channeled messages out there to those that need it most. Thank you so much for being here, Taurus. Lots of love and light.